All right, good evening. It's 5.30 p.m. on Wednesday, June 1st here in the Community Center. I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order and we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Where's the flag? It's actually in the, in the auditorium because of... One outside out there, right? It's going to be the outside. That works. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Okay. The West Central Area School Board has set aside time to allow the public an opportunity to address the board during the public comment segment of this meeting. Individual speakers are asked to limit their comments to not more than two minutes. The remainder of the meeting is designated for the board to conduct the business before them without interruption. The board asks that all comments be civil, courteous, and respectful. The public comment portion of the meeting is an opportunity for the board to listen to public comment. <coughs> The public comment portion of the meeting is not intended to be viewed as a discussion, but rather strictly an opportunity for the public to address the board with information you wish for us to take into consideration. Individuals who have questions they wish to ask of the board may direct those questions to questions at isd2342.org. Our mission statement is to challenge and support our students, staff, and families in each person's growth as an engaged learner and successful citizen of our community. I'm going to move into roll call, starting with Christensen. Here. Gross. Here. Nesman is here. Sabalik. Here. Sandstead. Here. And Strunk and Ulrich are not with us tonight. Okay. Moving into recognition of visitors and public comment, do we have anybody that wishes to address the board tonight? Okay. Ms. Johnson. Um, close to a microphone. Why don't we put you right over there? I'm here because I'm concerned that there's an email tech uh, problem. I'm getting very little response secondary building wise from teachers, school board members. Um, and it dates back all the way to the beginning of the year. I have a student that went from exceeding uh, top of the class to failing every single class this year. I've reached out repeatedly. There's been no recommendations made of any sort. They don't respond to my emails. I asked to be contacted repeatedly for behavior issues immediately. I do not get contacted again today. Uh, I have it all well documented, um, emails, meetings, all of the above. And, um, it's quite alarming, and if it's not a tech support, I'm questioning if it's a neglect issue at this point in time. Okay. So unfortunately, the board won't be able to ask you questions or respond to your statements because we're talking about private data regarding a student, but thank you for sharing your concerns. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Mr. Meidel? I just have a couple of comments and it's on behalf of the public. The board doesn't get recognized enough for the hard work they do. What you went through the last three years, we appreciate. Um, we know it's not easy. It's kind of a no win sometimes. And the other thing is I wanted to thank Mr. Hoagie for these three years that he's given the school district and stuff because it's a bridge from one superintendent to another and stuff. He's come in and he's tried to lead the district forward. I know you took a little break right now or whatever and stuff, but I know that you're gonna to have to get back to it again. Um, on the flip side of that, um, also probably on behalf of the public, a person should apologize because of the way some of the school board members and their kids have been treated or spouses, which if it's a board member, that's no big deal. But when it gets to spouses and kids, that should be off limits and it's not acceptable. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Any other visitors that wish to address the board tonight? <coughs> no? Okay. As none, we'll move into our agenda with uh, reviewing the modifications to tonight's agenda is the first thing. There are a few modifications under general consent items. We're going to add number two to approve the hiring of Tony Foos as administrative assistant at North Elementary at step one for the 2022-23 school year with up to 10 days with Louise at the end of the 21-22 school year. We're going to add number three, approve the hiring of Lance and I apologize, Whitnable. Does anybody know how that's pronounced? Natalie's. Whitnable. 
What did I still said it wrong? What enable? What enable? <laughs> as I apologize, I'm sorry. I will work on learning how to pronounce that. Um, as elementary physical education teacher at Step Nine at North Elementary, beginning the 22-23 school year, and approved the hiring of Nicholas Johnson as elementary physical education teacher at Step Zero at South Elementary, beginning the 22-23 school year. I believe currently those are the only other modifications. Any modifications um, in addition to the ones that I reviewed? <coughs> Seeing as none, I'll ask for a motion to accept the modified agenda. So moved. And a second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Oppose the same sign. Motion passes. Moving on to approval of the minutes. You have minutes from the um, 4 2022 and 5 4 22 meeting in your board packet. Um, any questions or comments? Seeing as none, I'll ask for approval of the minutes that were supplied to you in your board packet. So moved. And a second. Second. Okay. One favor say aye. 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 Opposed the same sign. Motion passes. Moving on to the approval of payments of claims. Mr. Sabalik, do you have any uh, checks you'd like to review with the board this month? I'd like to uh, bring to the board's attention check 149-944, which was a, the city of Barrett for $300. That was our zoning permit for the greenhouse that's going up. Spotsky's working on. Um, good project. Check number 150-093. It's the Alec Glass and Glazing. It was $1,115.70 to fix a, a door at the North Hall entry and replace a broken window here in the commons of the secondary school. And then check $150.113.28 for custodial supplies, 1,000 cleaners <clears throat> for our schools. So. Uh, the total to approve is 615, 685, and 63 cents. So I would move to approve. Mm -hmm. So the motion on the table to approve the payment of claims for this month. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Oppose the same sign. Motion passes. Moving on to uh, committee and activities reports. I believe, Mr. Kraft, you guys would like to present? Yes, we have three of us. Where would okay. you like to Fantastic. Um, if you could come over here to the most accessible microphone, that would be fantastic. Good evening. Say, so, um, WCA Education Foundation has been around since the mid-90s. Um, very recently, um, we have had uh, in-depth discussions concerning large fundraising of pockets of money, one of which we have deemed to be an endowed fund, uh, which we'll set aside at West Central Initiative Fund. We are aiming to get $1 million for that, and then the proceeds from that annually would be used to enrich classrooms and student experiences at WCA. The other pot of fund is going to be $1.5 million toward building of a wellness center. Um, now we say the building, what that really means is we want to raise the money for it, hand that money over to the school and the school would, would build it. Um, I'm gonna kind of turn it over to Jan Mahoney and Heather Carlson, they are on the fundraising committee. They're going to give you a few more details before we take some questions. Okay. Um, I'm Jan Mahoney, and I'm a new member of the West Central Area Education Foundation Board, and I'm honored to serve as such. So um, what we're, we're in the process right now of developing a strategy um, for raising that $2.5 million dollars. Um, we're very optimistic that we can accomplish that. We're calling it Vision 2025. We hope to attain that 2.5 million within three years, um, potentially a little bit longer, but having pledges over the next three years. So Heather, what else? Um, I think it's important to point out that we or what WCA Foundation is a 501c3. So we will be collecting the donations. We have um, 
the accounts set up at West Central Initiative. They will help us organize the money and the money will come to the school to do the building. So we are not, um, the school will not be managing that and we will not be doing building the actual structure. That will be up to the school and what they find and what their needs are. So we're just kind of helping raise the money and hand it over. So we are asking for approval. You know, you would be saying, yes, if you give us $1.5 million, it would be used for the, for the wellness center. Um, we're also asking permission to enter in conversation with an architect firm that we are gonna pay for. So we have some preliminary drawings, some schematics that, that we can use to communicate our message as we look to, to get those funds in our, in our accounts. Um, we, were, we also wanna emphasize the wellness center part. Yes, this will be used by our athletes, but this is also like a classroom for teachers to use for health, healthy lifestyles as kids are growing up. So there will be lots of different use by the school, not just the student athletes. Can you give us a little, a little bit of what, kind of what it's going to look like, like verbally? What, what are we talking about? We're we talking about weight, weight room, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're we're a little, not hesitant, but we're we're not clear exactly. First of all, location, um, content. Content would be steered, we believe. Again, you're the decision maker on what it end up, ends up looking like. But primarily, staff would have input on that. Hopefully, some community members, um, what it would look like. But yes, the weight room here is an undersized since we opened the building. So certainly, that would be addressed. Um, cardio, um, mental well-being, we're hoping to address as well. When is the winter... When's your plan to, I know we're addressing some of it tonight to, you know, as far as agreement goes, but when, what's kind of your plan to like your, the big kickoff and when are you expecting for that to be? Um, we're hopeful that we can get some marketing materials put together um, in the next few weeks. And we would use that to try to obtain uh, some lead gifts um, so that would kind of be our silent phase and then kick it off publicly at homecoming. Why do you, why did you pick the, the health and wellness or what, what should, why did you choose those two? That's a very good question. Um, we're going to give a little backstory. Jan came to me right after the elementary Christmas concert and said she wanted to raise money for WCA. And I said, well, what do you want to use it for? And she said, athletics. And I said, well, foundation's really not built for that. But if you want to talk about facilities and something that could impact every student at WCA, a wellness center might be. We brought it to the board and had lengthy discussions. And that rose to the top as, as our best option that can really help the most number of students. Are you looking to raise within our communities or wherever, or does it? And beyond. And, and beyond. Right. Um, we'll, we'll be looking to corporate, um, you know, within the region, I would say. Um, well, St. Cloud, Fargo, Alexandria. Um, so we'll, we'll go beyond our local communities. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. I got to say, as I've had the opportunity to be the board representative to sit in on your meetings, and I'm I'm excited. I'm I'm thankful for the energy that you guys have, um, trying to move to move this forward. I think it's a great opportunity for our school district. Um, you know, you look at our our weight room. Good luck. I mean, trying to get one class of anybody in that that room to for Phi Ed or anything. I mean, it, it will be a great opportunity for these kids. So thank you for your. Fortnite. And I think one of one of the important points that we will continue to communicate is that it's not only for a building, but it's for an endowment, a one million dollar endowment for an academic. We're calling it an academic enrichment fund. Mm -hmm. um, but the foundation will manage that as they do now, somewhat um, with other funds. Sounds great. Cool. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat>
we will move into our administrative reports. And Kevin, do you want to join us at the board table first? Yes. I'm very quick tonight because technology is just kind of a whirlwind, crazy race to the end. So things overall, things are going really well. The one piece I'd like to highlight is the third E-rate application was finally approved. So we do have funding for a new firewall and filter that will be coming in probably August, but ready for the new school year kickoff. Still waiting on two more federal funding requests, but those aren't even scheduled to be reviewed until later this month. That's really all I want to share. I don't have a whole lot, <laughs> which is which is unlike me, but that's okay. Tonight's a good night to keep it short. That's yeah, beautiful. It is. <laughs> to be on a walk. <laughs> is that the thing that was on everybody's mind? <laughs> um, any questions for Kevin? Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Oh. And I made an error. I'm going to oh, yeah, back up one second here. I skipped right over the buildings and grounds committee report. So before I move forward with administrative reports, we'll go back for just a second here. I was making a note and I wrote right over it. I apologize. Um, so Mr. Hoagie or uh, Darren or Terry, I'm not sure who wants to lead the discussion here. Put up on the screen here. To your left, you'll have it there. <clears throat> Did you did you want me to run through? Yeah, that would be great. Okay. okay. So um, we met on May 11th. Um, it was um, Darren and Terry and Chad and I, and we talked about capital improvements and and we have the fund that's available. It's eight hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars. It's been at that level for several years. Uh, talking to Diane. Um, that was accumulated over a, a few different years of time. The, the, the year would finish, fiscal year would finish, there'd be some money available that could go into the just in the general fund. So there was a conscious decision to put it aside so it would be for facility projects only. So it's a, a restricted fund capital improvements. So the, the, the reason that, that we kind of started having a discussion about that is that we looked at for two and a half, almost three years now, of what well, and the board prior to that looking at building bond referendums to address all the issues that we would have within the, the school district north and south and then some some needs here at the secondary school also after some failed referendums it's it's time to to do some work in our areas especially north and south to accommodate for um things that we've just kind of let, been letting go on we had discussion uh, a couple of weeks ago about capital outlay and Natalie Prash had indicated, you know, how the, the elementary staff have been putting off requests for furniture and things that they have or that they, they need in their classroom because they've been anticipating that would come along with a, a successful building one referendum. So we're, we're at the point in which we need to do something, and that's been discussed at the table by you as board members. So so with that, that capital improvements fund, the way that you access that is that if you have projects that you care to to spend money on you as a board would would uh, move to to transfer the money from that restricted fund to the general fund and then take care of specific tasks. So what we start talking about now is are what are some of the things that need to be addressed in our three sites and primarily north and south. So um, roof leaks, uh, <coughs> we we have them in all three buildings and and what will be done is Chad will contact two to three companies to come in and do an assessment of the roofs to find out about the integrity of what we have there, if they can identify leaks, if there has to be more than just uh, patching or small sections, and that would come back to the board um, to address those issues. Because even if we would pass a, a building bond referendum, uh, it, it's still you know three years out from the passage of that, that vote until you'd be into a new building anyhow. So um, there are some things that, that it'd be advisable to, to look at um, immediately. Um, if uh, replacement is needed, like uh, was under B, we decided that we would, and by law, you have to solicit quotes for that as well. So that takes us then to, to number three. Um, we talked about 
um, inexpensive ways to provide heating, ventilation, air conditioning within our buildings. And we talked about uh, rooftop units. So we're, we're looking at this as a, an economical option. Um, in, my, in my board report, I have some, some uh, things that you as board members need to discuss and ask. And this came about through a conversation that, that Darren and Michelle and I had. We had a, a video conference with Jeremy Christensen and Tony Wolf. And I'll, I'll hit that more when I get to, to that point. But um, we, um, the, the thing we found out from Chad is that if rooftop units were to be uh, ordered, they, they're probably about 18 months out. So this isn't something that happens, you know, real fast either. Uh, we discussed electrical limitations. We discussed options to get power to, to both sites and, and Chad will check with our, our local companies uh, to seek proposal for uh, rooftop projects. Um, elementary spaces, uh, again, with um, uh, areas that have been non-existent within our, our buildings, we want to provide um, opportunity to, to, to use these, these areas. Um, one of the things on the agenda is to purchase um, uh, portable, uh, reusable walls for partitions that would extend to the ceilings. Um, we have a, I have a couple of samples here, so when we get to that agenda item, I'll explain those. Uh, but we do have proposals, and what we had looked at was um, divider options. We looked at that construction of, of walls, so it would be steel studs, sheetrock, um, and I've been waiting for a rough estimate, but that hasn't come in yet. Um, manufactured panels in which you'd have a very office-like appearance and which would be professionally done uh, to do the area that we want. That proposal is $299,000. Um, construction panels, which is um, the uh, items that I have here. We're looking at, and that's an agenda item for about $40,000. We could get um, all the separation in those rooms with... Uh, uh, with foam walls, so there'd be some sound deadening, but what it really does is it separates the spaces. We also looked at expandable dividers, which are more like a curtain, which they're on rollers, where you can expand them out. Uh, they only come eight feet high, so you really don't get um, some separation from uh, the other class or the other work area. Um, so you'd have some, some noise filtering through there. We're also looking at a, a restroom at South. Um, work is in progress there, and that's more than likely going to be a, accomplished. Uh, through Chad's um, um, conversation with the plumber, he found that if you have um, five different access points for water, you need to have um, um, application for. Do you want? Do you want I mean, it's it's a it's a hookup rule that they have. So if you have more than five hookups, you have to apply for a state permit. State permits right now are eight eight to ten eight weeks nine weeks out before you can even start anything. So if we put in two bathrooms, we have 10 hookups. If we put in one bathroom, we have five, which is hot and cold for the sink, your drain, toilet, cold water, toilet drain. We're safe with one. We go to the next bathroom, then we've got to, we've got to fill out all the state permits and, and paperwork and, and all of that, which is not hard to fill out um, talking with them. It's just, then we sit and wait for the state to return their vote of yes or no or whatever. So that's a delayed factor. If if we want to go with two of them, um, it probably won't be ready by the time school starts is basically what that boils down to. And then to put that in down there, just to add a little more, we're going to have to break out the floor. We're going to have to bust out the floor to get down to the sewer. So then you're looking at waiting possibly until Christmas to get that all completed with the Christmas break. So um, that was kind of why we flipped to go to one unisex bathroom for a staff bathroom then to try and do the two male and female. So, And then also in that unisex bathroom would be a changing table that the elementary staff need for, for a couple of our students. So they would have a dual purpose and the other side of that room would be a lactating room. So it'd have a, a, a discrete wall between the two areas. And for lactating room, it's gotta be a space that's made available that is not a restroom. It's gotta be something separate than that. It doesn't need water, it doesn't need sewer, it just needs to be a, a, a private space. So then the other, other part of that office would serve as that, that um, lactating room area. Um, 
We're looking into heating options for area because as we put the wider walls, we want to make sure that we can provide heat to the different areas and, and Chad will be working on providing um, opportunities for us to, to get heat to those sections. Um, the WC Foundation Subcommittee project, there's an explanation here, and I think the, our three guests tonight um, explained that very well, but there's more information there if you care to read of it. Our greenhouse areas, we talked about um, parking area, we'll have a lot of traffic. The greenhouse will provide a, a lot of regional interest, and we're gonna have some guests here. But we, we talked about, is it, is it is it a good investment of money if we redo the parking lot, put pavement on it this time? So what we'll do is we'll, we intend to put gravel out there and make it a better parking lot. And then as, uh, as that um, wellness center is, is developed and constructed, then that would be the point where we would um, we'd be uh, paving that back parking lot area. Um, water and sewer access, Chad and, and, and Eric have been working on making sure that we get access to that area. The loading dock is something to be to be restructured. So Chad's been involved in getting um, that information for us and move forward in that project. We we talked about a solar panel project. We Susan Knudsen had submitted an initial application and and through the the process here, the the company that's doing this for us, there's some questions that they couldn't answer and. and uh, if this was to go forward, it'd be solar panels on the roof of this building, solar panels on the roof of um, of North, but we're still looking at, um, you know, the integrity of our roofs and, and Opta just to scrap the idea for, for the current time and uh, and potentially look to that to the future. Um, asbestos abatement, we've got the, the bids in on those and in addition to what's listed here, we also have a, a asbestos abatement plan for another classroom in south of an area where the, the carpet needs to be removed. So we're actually gonna be doing a asbestos abatement in the hallways on the north portion, and then also um, one of the classrooms. And then at the secondary site, um, you know, we, we talked some about uh, the outdoor uh, activity fields area and, and uh, with, uh, with the time that we have involved, it would be best to wait until Mr. Brownlow comes on and then start talking about what areas of those outdoor fields are you ready to, to look at and what kind of priority do you want to place on the different areas that need uh, attention outside. So that kind of takes us through the Buildings and Grounds Committee meeting and Darren and Terry or Chad, if you have anything to add. The only question I had was, uh, Chad, with as far as having a unisex bathroom, is the staff okay with that? Is that, is that that I know that I've honestly, I don't know if that question has been proposed to them. Okay. And I honestly don't know if they were told that, yes, you are getting two separate bathrooms. Um, my little bubble that I get knowledge about these situations is I think they will just be tickled pink to at least have a bathroom that, like Natalie says, you just want two minutes to just go potty and take a breath and all of a sudden you have a head popped underneath your stall and ask why your shoes are so big. <laughs> so um, I think I think just one bathroom, you work down in that building, you could, I mean. Sometimes you just need a silent moment. Right. So, uh, Naomi would be a good one to ask. And so one unisex bathroom would be okay down there. Oh, I think that would be plenty. Okay, that's all I need. To start. Okay, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> During the, the planning for all this, I've been engaged in conversation with Natalie. So we we've shared what our 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 ideas our ideas are, and she's indicated what her preferences are. So um, when I talked to her about the, the the recent change for the one restroom, and and also incorporating the changing room to that, she thought they're both needed. We'll we'll be fine with combining them into one space. And it's an eight by 10 space, so the ample space for the, the, the stool, the, the sink, and then also the changing table, which is uh, about a third of the size of one of these tables. So there's, there's easily space enough for everything. And, and also a storage cabinet for things that um, you might want to place in there as well. So. So they guess. Yeah, okay. All right, we'll jump back in. I'll oh, go ahead. Making recommendations on how to proceed with all of this based on the cash we have. Or, I mean, are we going to get into some of the finer points of when and how we 
Oh, or is it outdoor? Well, all of, all of these items, if you went through these nine items. Or... Well, he's got to get, he's going to get bids for the. Yeah, is that is this kind of the next step? Then we'll start deciding when and how. And then the, all everything the, prioritized. Prioritize it. Yep. Yeah, is that what you guys were thinking? Yeah. Yep. But, right. I would say roofs. Roofs would come first. So it, it, it's it's my it's my understanding that the the renovations like the asbestos abatement and the it, in our two buildings is that's already with yeah that was already and and when we're separating these spaces and dividing areas out we're already going forward on that so the additional cost besides the panels we purchased which will be about forty thousand dollars there'll also be carpet they'll be painting those rooms um lighting i've talked to chad about re replacing the yellow dingy um diffusers the plastic diffusers for the lights so it's brighter in the room so you know, it's my understanding that you're going forward with that and using the eight hundred fifty thousand dollars rather than the general fund. That's, that was my key. Piece. Yeah, yeah, because yes. we're using the general fund now as we go, right? So then we'll just reallocate that. Correct. Assuming, I guess, the board will have to make. Yep. And you, that's your recommendation. That is absolutely. That's my recommendation. Is is that 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 fund is there for use, and we've had a discussion about that. So rather than depleting the general fund, we're using a fund that's been established for capital projects, and that's what you're spending money on. Yeah. Very good. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay, we'll move into uh, back to the administrative reports. And Naomi, if you want to talk through community ed, fantastic. There's just two small things. I had to make a correction. I went in and asked um, Allie this morning about um, the meal costs this summer for our summer producing hospital in Elbow Lake, and they do a fantastic job. They had to increase their costs because of everything else that's going on. And so I had in my report that it was 50 cents per meal. It is actually a whole dollar. So it was 360 last year. And now this summer it will be $4 and 60 cents per meal, which is still on the low side if we're looking at a full meal. So just so you guys are aware that is an issue um, that the summer care will be um, have to endure there. Um, Summer rec, we've got people are signing up like crazy. Chrissy always says her emails are just dinging with people. And so people are getting signed up. We have um, full teams, I think, for pretty, I was just looking at for pretty much everything with our ball program. Um, some of the things that happen in August, um, sometimes their registrations are a bit slower until the time gets a little bit closer, just probably because they don't know what they'll be doing August 1st and 2nd. So I do think that those numbers will go up too. There, everybody, there's nothing that has zero except for a couple of swimming lessons um, registrations for like the oldest levels. So everything else has kids that are registered for all the programming that we're um, offering this summer, which is good. Um, I haven't gotten an update from Paysetter about their basketball because they had a separate um, link for that. And so um, last time I think it was 18, 13, and 8 for all of the sessions. So that will also be moving forward. Um, they do have their minimum requirements met. Um, I just wanted to remind people, um, if they're watching this, that the second session of swimming lessons this year is with the YMCA. Last year, we kind of contracted out with a separate um, agency, and um, we were able to get the YMCA to come and do two sessions for us this summer, which we're excited about. So the first one is July 11th through the 21st, um, and that one is 40, 30-minute lessons um, for two weeks. And then the August session, which is the first week of August, is 45 minute lessons for four days. So there is some um, flexibility there for parents to get into either grouping. Um, I'll be working with Mr. Schoenbauer in June to get him acquainted. Um, he's gonna have plenty of time to be able to sit down with myself, with Chrissy, with um, Sherry, with Louisa, and lots of questions answered. So he should be ready to take off on July 1st. Um, I, and my board, just thank you for your guys' support the last four years. I've been super appreciative of that. I felt very supported throughout um, being in this position, and I've enjoyed my opportunity of doing it. So thank you guys again for having me, and I am excited to get back to SPED. So last board meeting. <laughs> 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 Any questions? I just would like to say thank you for all the work you've done in the past four years. We've seen some fun things, um, and the most recent one that comes to my mind is the family dance that you just did, and there was a ton of success there. So um, very – Photos for that right now is your – Fun. <laughs> Oh, very grateful. And um, you arguably were in charge of it during maybe one of the most challenging times we've ever seen um, and dealing with that COVID thing that we don't like to talk about because hopefully it's very far in our rearview mirror, but thank you for all you do. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question. Do you know how many meals with the net impact that would be here? Is it a hundred, a thousand, or is it that we total would, meals yeah, for the summer? Yeah. So just a ballpark. Or maybe you don't. I'm know. trying to think because we just looked at last year's statement, and I'm trying to think of for the month of June because they break it down. They'll give you the exact number. It was like 200 lunches in June. Okay. So it's under a thousand lunches per <clears throat> summer. Okay. Um. That's gives me an idea. Okay. Perfect. If you want more, I can we can pull up the stuff. No, and we can get it. I was just curious. With yeah. Approximately. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Mr. Foslin was not able to be with us tonight. Is there anything, Dale, that you wanted to highlight in his uh, report that came out? I, I, it's less than a page. I think you probably had an opportunity mm -hmm. to peruse that. If you have any questions, I'll certainly answer anything that you might have, but. I think it's self-explanatory. Any questions from the board? Okay, uh, Chad, we'll move into buildings and grounds. Um, you didn't get a report from me. I'm gonna pull it, Kevin, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, this meeting just crept up on me in the last couple of weeks has been kind of a whirlwind with things going on. So I apologize for that. Um, just overall, uh, these last couple of storms, all three of our buildings have done very well. <laughs> They're still standing. Um, the generator here uh, has gotten a good workout with the last two storms. We've gotten close to eight hours of runtime out of that. Um, so everything is is going top notch and working well with that. Um, on to the buildings uh, north. We've had uh, basically all this year a fire panel issue up there with batteries and tripping and things like that. It's in the boiler room. Um, I've had a heck of a time getting Summit, who we are contracted with right now, to come take care of that panel. And even knowing that if they showed up or not, um, I've had people in the building say, oh, yeah, they were here two, three days ago. And so right now we are in the process of moving that fire panel out. Um, I've got the electricians there um, today and tomorrow between that building and south because of the bathroom construction our fire panel down there has to be moved too. So they're prepping everything. I'm in the process of going from this summit company that is nothing but bad news from anybody I talk to. Um, uh, was he, maybe, wait. <laughs> um, I talked to him too. He switched over an Alec because, just because of the same situation, this summit company has kind of merged and does not have any people and, and they're not responding to calls. So I've been in contact with Nova and that's who we're working with right now. So we're getting that panel moved out um, at North and getting moved over into a storage area and actually much closer to an access door for fire or anybody else that comes in instead of in that boiler room. The heat is a huge issue. That constant heat is a huge issue on batteries and everything else. Um, so that's taking place at North and at, at South, like I said, there wasn't an issue, but it has to be moved. So everything's getting prepped. When this company shows up on Thursday, we can do both panels in the same day and make sure they're hooked up and, and don't have any ongoing issues. They'll work with um, Vinco. Um, I've mentioned a couple of times, our use in that gym at North has really increased. And with the new uh, conference that we're in, and things that are going on and just with our kids expanding in sports and stuff. Again, would like to really consider the possibility of redoing that gym floor, just like we did here. Um, even with keeping it clean and things like that, there have been comments from some of the kids and, and even some of the coaches that it's slippery. And, and so if we're playing volleyball, we're playing basketball, whatever on there, especially as we get some of these older kids in there to play because we're out of space. Jeez. Your books. It, uh, <laughs> it, uh, it could become a possible injury issue um, that we might have to worry about for our kids. So um, I just want to throw that out there just to roll that around. Maybe you guys can discuss at a later point in time what you think too. Um, we have the two rooms at North. Um, like Mr. Hoagie said, and we had talked about, abatement is set on those uh, July 11th. Those will be taken care of. And I am in contact also to, as soon as that is done, they are prepped and ready uh, to jump right in afterwards with getting the carpet in there. 
So we should, within a four or five day period, have those two rooms done so we're not tied up for an extended period of time. Um, we had talked before about getting that boiler system and everything up on the computer system so I'm able to look at it. We have that. The part of that that we're still working with is all these exhaust around the gymnasium in the gymnasium that are also on part of the system and it's also getting the air into the building that we need. Um, we have one of them of 13 that is working. I went up there, there was still snow on the roof. We were up there looking at them, um, popped a cover off. One is not even there. Um, a couple other ones were there, but there was no belts. So anyways, they came back with a couple of units two weeks ago. We went up on the roof. They were going to replace a couple of them, see if we could get them working. Um, the guy that came, uh, we took five covers of 13 off and all five of the five we took off were shot. So I told him, I don't even want you putting brand new motors on here. Um, he's working on getting us an estimate to um, rebuild those basically from the ground up or actually just put brand new units on. He says, we'll put brand new motors on them. They may work for a month, they may work for six months, but because you could spin them, you could hear it squeak, you could hear the shafts. He says, these shafts are shot, they're so old, I'll never be able to pull them apart to rebury them. So then you're looking at an hour for me to do each one of these, then you're gonna call me back in six months and you're gonna look at my cost of basically probably replacing them at that time, but yet another four hours to come up here, tear them all off. So I told him, no, don't put any on, give me a cost. And I discussed it with Mr. Hoagie and we also talked about that it's probably better to do it that way because even with the new construction that was planned for North, that area is all stained. Nothing is gonna change with that. So the air quality is already shown it's not good. We need to have those exhaust vents. So he's getting me those numbers. So I'll wait for those numbers to come back so I can present those. Um, <clears throat> I have on that building secondary. Um, things are looking pretty good here. Uh, Right now, just a big push is preparing for graduation, getting all the stuff set up and getting that going and getting the gym ready. Um, I think we're doing pretty good with that, working with Ms. Knutson on that. Um, generator worked well. Uh, the other thing here, for some reason this year, we've had uh, a great affection with the ball and lights in the gym. <clears throat> I think we've busted probably a dozen bulbs uh, in the gym with balls this year. I don't know if it's because kids are kids or and or we've had more um, release. Uh, what is, what's the word? What's the uh, lunchtime? Recess. Uh, recess. Release time. <laughs> recess <laughs> because of our, our weather and things like that. Thanks, Secretary. <laughs> um, so we're going to have to do probably a lot of electrical work in there because when they hit these and break them, a lot of times it burns out the end amounts. So an electrician is going to have to come in and do it. Um, they can't just go up and replace a bulb in, in a lot of them. Um, so with that taking place with the solar panel thing, Otter Tail was here and I had them do me up a proposal um, on what we would save changing that gym to LEDs. Uh, in the long run, it would cost them about three to $4,000 to the district for changing that whole gym over to LEDs. Um, your payback for that would come in 0.94 years. So just under a year. Um, and then of course they had a little detail on there and I can send this out to anybody that wants. I kind of just got it. Um, every month we wait, it's two, $209. <laughs> but just to throw that out there for something else for you guys to, to gnaw over. Um, and yeah, like you talked in the thing, the greenhouse stuff is going, that's all moving forward. We are, I don't know if anybody's been around back, but all of the grass and concrete in that area and uh, some of the tar stuff is all torn out. Again, they were supposed to be here just over a week ago to start doing excavation because they want to be here. Uh, I think Eric said the end of this month to start putting the greenhouse up. So you need to have the foundation down. Um, 
So yeah, we they haven't been able to get in. It's just too wet. Um, we do have a good base. We did some boreholes out there, so they don't have to dig down very far before we're going to have a good base out there for them to work with. And uh, south, yep, the uh, abatement is July 18th through the 22nd is kind of what's slated for those two hallways. Um, and then in the meantime, we had a classroom that popped up and I talked to Mr. Hoagie on this. I went down and looked at it. Um, Lance uh, from Lakes Country also went down and looked at it. It was right in the front of the door where you walk in. Uh, carpet was starting to peel back and the tiles were just chipped in there. Um, so I went down to look to see if it was an area that I could take care of. As I went through the classroom and crawled around on my hands and knees, um, you could feel underneath the carpeting, all of the tiles, you could hear them crack and, and being together. So when I talked to Mr. Ogie and, and with Lance, we decided that it would be in our best interest and I called and they were able to squeak it in. So when they are there doing those two hallways, they will be able to do that classroom at the same time. Um, so that will be taken care of. Um, again, carpets lined up. So as soon as they're done, they can get in there and take care of that classroom. Same with those hallways. As soon as they're done, I have uh, Andy um, waiting. He's got materials so that he can get in there and take care of those floors and we can, we can have everything done in a very short period of time. And the boilers are finally getting the proper fix down there so we can get chemical into our system next year. Um, we've got the tank, we've got the design, we've got everything figured out so we can get that condensate tank in there like it's supposed to be because there is not one and uh, nobody can figure out why there has never been one in there. So that is all gonna get taken care of here probably by the end of June, first part of July. So when we're up and running next year, we will be able to chemical the water in and hopefully save our pipes for the amount of time left that we need um, with that building. And with all the other buildings, it's just uh, back to summer cleaning. I'm trying to get that schedule figured out and shuffle our people around because with all the abatement going on at South, uh, that's going to take a lot of a weeks off of Mark's plate. So we're moving some people around and, and getting things set and our game plan together. So that's what I got for you. Any questions? Um, where are we at on the, where are we at on the curtains? We talked about the curtains in the auditorium and stuff having to be redone and then that we had numbers and now we haven't, we haven't heard nothing. That's, I, I don't know what to do. I got the numbers. I got the proposals. I, I brought those out. I mean, that's, I, I guess I thought that was something you guys as a board were going to discuss. It wasn't for me to pull the trigger on. Cause right. Was, no, you're right. That, that's on me. I didn't put it on our agenda for buildings and grounds. And it's just one of the things that we looked at that I. But we need, we need, we, we have to do it. Right. I mean, that's where we're, we're at or, or we don't have to do it. I know we, you gave us two options of what, it, what was possible if we need to do it. <clears throat> it is, it is looked at by the state. Um, but with my searching around, nobody has yet to be dinged on it. Our two options, three options. The, the first option, which is the cheapest is that they can be redipped. The guy that was here, the salesman, yeah, they're given a sales pitch, but I also agree those things are 26 years old. He says, if you got a 50, 50 chance that when you dip them and you pull them back out, they're going to fall apart. Mm -hmm. So you've paid to have them dipped and then you get them back and they're ruined and you're, you're in the same boat anyways. The second option was, um, I don't remember right offhand. It was in that $20,000 range for curtains, just like we have, but they're good for 20 years. And then the next one, I think, was a, it wasn't very much. I want to say it was like twenty four thousand. Um, if you want me to pull them up, I can have them pulled up here a little later for the exact numbers. But I think it was like twenty four thousand, and those were for ones that were a lifetime fire retardant. And that is that would be all of the curtains, the the big main curtain in the front, all of the scrim shirt curtains on the sides, um, to replace all of them. Um, and, and I just happened on that by chance. Like I said, I was backstage doing some cleaning and stuff. And I happened to look up and I saw one of these wooden tags and I looked at it and it had the date of when the building was built on the curtains. So um, 
the next thing was, is that guy was the same guy that was here doing some stuff for Jake and somehow sent me an email. And about two days later, I had this email on. And so I just called him for giggles just to see what he would say. And he happened to be in the area literally and stopped in and that's how this got started. Otherwise I really probably wouldn't have thought anything about it either. So that's where that's at. And like you said, uh, the other thing was, is all of our rigging and stuff actually looks well. So it's just a curtain. He didn't crawl up there and look, but I said, you know, everything pulls well. We pulled the curtains. I said, you know, it's in good shape that way. So it's looked basically that he gave me the quote was just on the curtains and it figures that's all we would need. The uh, redipping. Is there any cons to that compared to purchasing new curtains? I mean, was there any? Just that you might not get them back. You might not get the curtains back? No, because they're so old. I mean, <laughs> take an old tattered t-shirt. Sure. You know, you dip it in chemicals it to sustain the chemical and hold it. And you go to pull it out and it's just going to start falling apart. I mean, that's what he said. You've, you, From what he's seen, he says in the last eight, nine years from what I've seen, there's a 50-50 chance you're going to pay the $12,000. I'm just throwing that out there. I don't know. $8,000 have your curtains dip. They're going to dip them in the tank. They're going to pull the curtains out of the tank and they're just going to start shredding or fall apart or they'll put them together and send them to you. And then when we try and get them put up on the thing, they're going to start tearing and pulling apart, trying to feed them through. So, I mean, that, that, that's what he said. You got a 50, 50 chance that you're going to spend more money than you need to. So. Sounds good. Maybe we'll see that on a future agenda. Um, Mr. Hoagie, okay. um, after some further discussion between you and Chad, I would assume. We have, I've got it on as a note here, absolutely. Okay. Um, a, a couple of things I, I didn't print. Uh, first one, I want to thank Darren and his crew for um, keeping me informed about power outage, anticipated time. So his message went through Kevin, Kevin to me. So kind of left you alone. I figured you're a little busy, but I'm glad you got by with a very few hours of sleep. But um, when you look at um, all of the lines down, it's kind of surprising that you actually got power into Elbow Lake and how you managed to to get us up and running again. That was that's uh, very much appreciated. And um, it, you know, as far as you know, the school day without having a firm idea of when we're going to start, you know, we we put staff members and students in a situation which yeah, we could have probably brought them into the building, but it may not have been a, a productive day. And and then this morning again with. Our outage, I thought, you know, we're, we're going to take our chances. It was kind of too late to call off school at that time. But um, fortunately, um, you got power back up and going quickly. So so thank you to you and everybody else that um, assisted you in that. Um, the other thing that's not on there is, uh, you know, with the state legislature, the, you, you know, we all know of the um, massive surplus that the state has. And, and there was really good discussion between the House and the Senate and the governor about how those monies could potentially filter to the district. And you get really optimistic, but but one thing I have to always remind myself is the session's never over till it's over. And as good as things looked, I mean, with one of the, the, the printouts late in the session that appeared that there, there might be a benefit to the district in addition to the increase in our regular aid, an increase of about $240,000 by eliminating the, the special education cross subsidy. but. However, you know, the politics work and not being able to come to agreement, uh, they, they, they didn't get that pulled out. You know? So what looked very favorable and would have helped every district in the, in the state of Minnesota, and, and uh, it would have been impactful for us. And um, you know, it, it, if we're looking at our deficit projection this year, it would have erased about half of that. And uh, that's, um, that's disheartening. Um, but uh, the, on the positive side, that fund balance will be there again. And, and uh, if, if there doesn't get to be a recession, if, we're, if our economy stays good in Minnesota, then it can come the following year, which is the year in which they really address uh, funding for education anyhow. So it was a little disappointing for administrators across the state. You know, we heard that information last week when the session closed and nothing was done. On the report that I have, congratulations to Mrs. Knudsen. Um, Maggie had submitted a nomination for principal of the year to her 
Secretaries Association and of the nominees are presented. Uh, Mrs. Council was accepted or, or selected as the principal of the year. So congratulations to her. And it's a, a, an awesome recognition for her. So um, facilities discussion, um, you know, kind of continuation. I've shared some of this already, but, um, you know, we wanted to find out, you know, what, what, what can we do with a small investment of money that's going to provide heating, air conditioning, ventilation at, at North and South, and how can we manage that? And there's discussion of, of rooftop ventilators. So through the discussion that, that Darren and Michelle and I had through a, um, a video conference with uh, Tony Wolf and Jeremy Christensen, we, we talked about rooftop ventilators and how that would work and kind of came to the conclusion that probably the best option is to put a unit up that would serve two classrooms. It, it minimizes the duct work. Um, so that would be an, an option. Uh, lifespan of these, um, you know, could be as much as 15 years. Uh, there is potential for that to happen sooner because they are exposed to the elements. Um, they usually go down in intense periods of use. So that's either the winter season, the coldest months, or summer season when you're attempting the air condition. Uh, so that that doesn't the air conditioning part isn't as much of an issue for us in our north and south building because you know, the number of people that we have occupancy at those times is relatively small. But um, to do that, there's there's some things that the board needs to look at in the, in the future. And, and I've identified, you know, four of those main things. And one is um, an inspection of the rooftop and the walls to make sure that the integrity of those areas would provide uh, the support, the stability needed for a, a rooftop unit. Um, Darren had talked about the electrical code and then what, what we have coming into the building in Elbow Lake, Darren has said is, is adequate, sufficient. We're not sure about South, but presume that, that it's good as well. So then it's the infrastructure within the building on, on handling that additional load. Uh, the desired appearance in the classroom, we talked about, um, you know, to, to go without soffits to keep the cost down so you'd see exposed ductwork rather than having it enclosed in soffit. And then also the financing options. How do you manage um, two sites, two facilities to do something that um, would provide um, the, the fastest solution to addressing those issues. Um, number three, uh, year on picnic and potluck. So the, the board for for several years, from what I understand, has uh, provided an opportunity to, to provide staff members with uh, potluck. The staff members also contribute to that as well. And then that starts at one o'clock on, on this Friday, uh, school, school dismissed that at 12.30 and then at two o'clock program beginning that will acknowledge and honor a number of our staff members. So uh, thank you board in advance for participating in that. And we look forward to you staying for the, the meeting portion too, if you're available. Um, summer facilities work. I mean, here's a summary of, of everything that Chad and I have already talked about. So again, it gives you another location. What we have kind of on the rolls, not everything as far as cost has been provided to us yet, but we have a pretty clear understanding of, of um, you know, where we're headed during these summer months. So that's all I have, unless you have questions. Um, does the board have any additional questions uh, for any other administrative reports of administrators that are not here? I kept one thing in, I forgot. Sure. sure. I had another thing for those rooms down at South where we we're going to divide that area. And uh, Doug from uh, GNR Controls, when we were there looking at setup, I just asked him uh, the setup for the boiler room. I asked him, he, us, and he was giving me a price on it. He thinks that we can very reasonably, because there is steam lines right there that we can tap into and he can put small units on one end or the other of those rooms and they will be individually controlled from each room. So, um, sorry, that's slipped my mind, but as far as just for self, for those heating ones, he, he figured that would be a, a, a good option. Thank you. So. 
Um, All right, we'll move into general consent items. There is four on the agenda for consideration by the board tonight. Number one is to approve the retirement of North Elementary custodian Kathy Brunko with her last day of work to be July 29th, 2022. Number two, approve the hiring of Tony Foos as administrative assistant at North Elementary at step one for the 22-23 school year with up to 10 days with Louisa at the end of the 21-22 school year. Number three is approve the hiring of Lance Whit Whitnable as elementary physical education teacher at step nine at North Elementary beginning the 22-23 school year, 8-23-22. And number four, approve the hiring of Nicholas Johnson as elementary physical education teacher at step zero at South Elementary beginning the 22-23 school year with a start date of 8-23-22. Questions or comments from the board? Um, I just want to say something about Kathy. Um, she's the absolute best. I've worked with her with Jim's, you know, mostly with gym space and such and you just can't replace her. She is absolutely amazing. She goes above and beyond. She won't even, I have to argue with her just to try and sweep the floor myself. She won't, she won't even let me sweep. And she's just one of them people that you just, you know, you just can't replace her. And, and I know I appreciate all the time that she's put in here. Very good. Any other questions or comments? Seeing as none, I'll ask for a motion to approve the general consent items. So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Oppose the same sign. Motion passes. Moving on to new business. First reading of WCA policies that are required to be reviewed periodically. Tonight, our policy number 521, student disability non-discrimination. Policy number 523, policies incorporated by reference. Policy number 525, violence prevention applicable to students and staff. And policy number 526, hazing prohibition. A summary of policy changes was submitted for the board to review in their board packet. Any questions or comments on these policies tonight? <clears throat> Seeing as none, I'll move on to number two under new business, which is the final reading of the following WCA policies to be revised with applicable statutory and recommended changes by MSBA. Policy number 517, student recruiting. Policy number 518, DNR, DNI orders. Policy number 519, interviews of students by outside agencies. And policy number 520, inform student surveys. <coughs> The summary of policy changes was also providing for, provided for you for these four policies in your board packet. Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing as none and saying as this is the final reading of those policies, I'll ask for a motion to approve. So moved. Second. And is all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed the same sign. Motion passes. Moving on to number three, consider and approve the support of the WCA Foundation fundraising project that includes raising revenue for the construction and equipping of a student community wellness center to be attached to the south side of the secondary school and working with Zerberg Architects for the project design phase. <coughs> Questions or comments from the board? Move. Okay. Move. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed the same sign. Motion passes. Moving on to number four, consider and approve increases in substitute teacher rates from $115 to $135 for a full day and from $60 to $70 for a half day beginning the 22-23 school year. Uh, Mr. Hoagie was gracious enough to supply the board in his um, agenda explanations and explanation for the increase and I believe we've discussed this at the board table prior. Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing as none, I'll ask for a motion to approve. So moved. And is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed the same sign. Motion passes. Moving on to number five, consider and approve FY23 capital outlay recommendation. Mr. Hoagie, I know you made some um, adjustments after the last board discussion. Was there anything you wanted to um, clarify in addition to the <coughs> Just I hit that target area where you asked me to go to, so we did that. Um, a lot of those were uh, proposals that came from Mr. Fosleen and then uh, one in the music area. So the document that you got, I highlighted the things that were, were changed. So um, my recommendation is, is to continue forward with that. The one thing that might change is that with the delay in, in action, we, we may not be able to contract with Mr. Bukins for the painting that uh, Jake had proposed because he may have taken on 
additional jobs and no longer has the time to complete that this summer. Any questions or comments from the board? So we landed at 173. So Correct. Yeah. Move to approve. There's a motion on the table. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Approve the same sign. Opposed, excuse me. <laughs> Opposed the same sign. Motion passes. Moving on to number six. That's what happens when I try and do two things at once. Uh, consider and approve resolution accepting donations, whereas every such acceptance shall be by resolution of the governing body adopted by a two-thirds majority of its members expressing such terms in full. Therefore, be it resolved that the School Board of West Central Area Schools, ISD 2342, gratefully accepts the following donations as identified below. Lean Township for $500 for Community Ed in Summer Rec, Stony Brook Township for $150 for Community Ed in Summer Rec, City of Hoffman for $1,000 for Community Ed in Summer Rec, Lawrence Township for $50 for Community Ed in Summer Rec, Solem Township for $400 for Community Ed in Summer Rec, Kensington Fire Relief Association for $1,000 for Community Ed in Summer Rec, Town of Land for $1,000 Community Ed in Summer Rec, Grant County Lions for $300 for Change Makers, WCA Post Prom Committee for $540.27 for Post Prom Transportation, Elbow Lake Lions for $300, for Community Ed in Summer Rec, uh, Elbow, Elbow Lake Fire Relief for $2,500 for Community Ed in Summer Rec, Elbow Lake Fire Relief Association for $3,000 for WCA Robotics Club, Elbow Lake Fire Relief for $3,500 for Wolf Ridge for Grade 6, Elbow Lake Fire Relief for $500 for Voyager Canoe Trip for Grade 6, Elbow Lake Fire Relief for $500 for Changemakers, City of Kensington for $1,000 for Community Ed and Summer Rec, and Kensington Lions Club for $500 for Community <coughs> Ed and Summer Rec. Do I have a motion to approve the resolution as read? So moved. And a second? Second. And we'll move into a roll call vote, starting with Christensen? Yes. Gross? Yes. Nesman's a yes. Sabalik? Yes. Sandstead? Yes. And no Strunker Ulrich. Moving on to number seven, consider and approve the resolution of Lodge Association and other similar organization. This would be the resolution that we decided to table until we got further information regarding why Kensington Bank was supplying um, it to us and we received additional information regarding why this document's necessary. Um, there is not resolution, clear resolution language on here. Uh, other than the name and title or position signature. Um, and it states that agents, any agent listed below subject to any written limitations is authorized to exercise the powers granted as indicated below. Uh, the four individuals that are listed on here are Michelle Nussman as chairperson, Jeremiah Ulrich as vice chairperson, Sarah Strunk as clerk, and Gary Sabolik as treasurer. It's dated 6 1 of 2022. Any comments or questions? Approved. Okay, motion to accept the resolution. Is there a second? Second. And we'll move into a roll call vote. Christensen? Yes. Gross? Yes. Nesman's a yes. Sabalik? Yes. And Sensted? Yes. Okay, we'll move on to number eight. Consider and approve waiver of the instructional day last for students from May 13th and 31st, 2022, with faculty working with respective building principals to make up their time. Questions or comments from the board? Move to approve. Okay. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Oppose the same sign. Motion passes. Number nine, consider and approve Rebecca Holland as head girls basketball coach at step zero. Comments or questions? Seeing as none, I'll ask for a motion to approve. Moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Oppose the same sign. Motion passes. Moving on to number 10, consider an approved memorandum of understanding with the 12 month district office support staff group. Um, I will provide just a little bit of extra information here. In the 12 month district office group, there is a job point allocation that is equivalent to the job point allocation for the 10 month support staff group, but the pay scales are not the same. And so what the memorandum of understanding does is it takes that the two positions in two different contracts that have the same job point allocation and brings the salary schedules to the same amount. Any questions? How many people does that affect as far as the 12 months? Uh, it's one individual that's within one job point allocation. 
the question. Any other questions? To approve. Okay, there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Oppose the same sign. Motion passes. Moving on to a number 11, correct? Yep. Consider and approve Swift Wall's proposal of $39,738.35 plus shipping and handling for panels to provide separated spaces at North and South Elementary. Mr. Hoagie, I'll let you provide some uh, background information here. Okay, so I've, I've talked about the, the options that we considered in this. These are both some from Swift Wall and, and it's got paintable surfaces on both sides and it's got aluminum. And uh, they'll come in 10 feet height, so they have to be cut off a little bit at the top uh, to fit into both classrooms at north and south. But then this panel, we've got almost two inches here. So even if the cut's not perfect, this is going to to, to cover up any um, missed cuts. You want to hold that down? So the difference in cost from 40, about 40,000 for the ones that've got the aluminum connectors here to the ones that are just foam is about $5,000. So we're looking about $35,000 and we're looking at about 40. So through discussion, we thought that these probably weren't going to stand up as well. Um, once these are in place, if you decide to reconfigure, you can take them apart, reconfigure them. If you don't need them, you can use them sometimes, sell, resell them or whatever. So for the additional $5,000, it just seems appropriate to go with the more durable product. Um, and it's, it's foam in the center, so it's going to provide some sound dampening between the rooms. And it's going to give us a relatively attractive appearance um, compared to what we've been using in those spaces right now. So. Um, it'd be my recommendation that you support the swift wall proposal. Um, there are door options that are included in that price. So it's a, a door very much like, um, um, it's not like a solid wood door, but it's foam also, but it's got locking mechanism. So there is some security on there. Um, so yeah, I think it's a, a, a relatively inexpensive solution to provide those spaces that we've been looking to, to have at North and South for a number of years. Very good. Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing as none, do I have a motion to approve Swift Wall's proposal of $39,738.35? So move. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Oppose the same sign. Motion passes. Moving on to communication and discussion, we'll start with facility improvements, North and South Elementaries. Well, for discussion, I, mean, I think we've already kind of had that chat and I've given you information, buildings and grounds, we have the summary. So, you know, at, at this point, I, I think we're on the same page with going through with some of the projects we've discussed. The other ones, Chad is looking to get quotes and proposals on and go forward, um, you know, after Mr. Brownlow gets on board again and you start talking about uh, facilities or you talk start talking about finance, so. Any questions from the board? Okay, we'll move on to number two, set meeting date to approve the secondary principal contract. Um, as you know, we did have interviews yesterday. It oftentimes takes a couple of days to um, work through the contract language, uh, but the board will need to meet to approve that contract. Mr. Hoagie, did you have some potential dates in mind? Well, I don't. My schedule is open, but four board members present, and, and you're going to have a, a closed session and talk about negotiations. But um, do you have an idea when you might have a response? I would think that we would be safe to tentatively schedule something perhaps at uh, 1230 on Friday when we're going to have board members here um, for the staff meal anyways. I think that would be a good use of, of time. Um, I do think that potentially we should select an alternate date next week in case. We, we, we can't do Friday because we. Oh, there's not quite notice. 40. Is it 72? 72 hours. Um, so we could look at next week then. Uh, Monday and Tuesday, I will not be accessible. But if there's four other board members that could do Monday or Tuesday, um, those dates would be an option. I could. I should be able to do both. Either one. I you, you don't need to necessarily do 5.30 in the afternoon. You could do 7 a.m. also if that's mm -hmm. convenient for, for board members. I have I have conflicts on Monday morning. Um, but Tuesday morning, if, if, if you care to go at 7 a.m. meeting or something such as that instead. Well, that would work if you need 
It'd be quick, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just a- seven. There's, could you do seven? Mm-hmm. That's three of us. There's four. I got it. If you can, there. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Okay. Seven a.m. on Tuesday. Okay. <clears throat> Sounds good. And we'll go ahead and move into uh, other items. Uh, consider and approve going into closed session as permitted by Minnesota statute section 13D.05 subdivision three for negotiations of the secondary principal contract. Do I have a motion to close the meeting? So moved. And a second? Second. So, thank you. Motion by Sandstead, second by Sabalik. All in favor say aye. Aye. Was the same sign. Motion passes. Okay. Yes, you, did. you have a recorder in your I have it. 